this will be interesting. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Tonight's podcast of the Scotchy Bourbon Boys is you're getting a little bit of extra upfront information uh, that you won't get on the actual podcast because the podcast is about to start. Uh, you get a little insight to uh, how I go about doing it. Tonight we are tasting uh, everyday drinkers. We're going to get into what an everyday drinker is, what a drinker is, what an everyday sipper is, and what a sipper is. We're just going to kind of define the categories. But in the meantime, it's time to, all right, I got all of this. I got all my information, uh, exciting news. All three of our sp uh, spots, our main spots, uh, have been filled with sponsors. So tonight will be the first night that all three have been filled. Exciting news, exciting, exciting news. I'm ready to go. Welcome everybody to the podcast of the Scotchy Bourbon Boys tonight. Uh, we are having, I believe, our 106th podcast. Uh, we are in the second season and this is podcast number 66. I, oh my God. Okay, it didn't. It was just another time when I was, okay. So anyways, a little bit of technical difficulties as we're coming, but uh, we are ready to get going with Everyday Drinker. Spirits of French Lick is proud to introduce the Maddie Gladden Bottled and Bond Bourbon. This four-year-aged bourbon is double pot distilled and non-chill filtered and has a full-bodied mouthfeel with eucalyptus, molasses, clove, ginger, and slight citrus as well as grains of paradise. The finish is long and reappearing on the back of the tongue with notes of pepper, tobacco leaf, and mint cream. All of our spirits are available for tasting and purchase inside the French Lick Winery and Distillery. Spirits of French Lick, respect the grain, please enjoy responsibly, and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. everybody to another exciting podcast of the scotchy bourbon boys tiny here tonight uh coming off the last podcast that we did with aaron cross of the cast chasers the fun duel of kirkland versus 1792 it's also an exciting evening because we have completely filled our advertising spots we now have the Spirit of French Lick. The Spirit of French Lick is the largest pot still distillery in the state of Indiana. Pot still distillation is a small batch process focused on the consideration of and retention of flavor and aroma. It is reflective of the grain, fruit, and other locally sourced ingredients. The distillery focuses on their pillars, on four pillars of distillation, bourbon, brandy, botanical spirits, and American whiskey. Uh, I'm at the point, folks, where if I forget my glasses, that was uh, pretty lame. I thought I would look a little bit better on the podcast because tonight uh, I'm recording it for YouTube, but that won't happen again. Uh, the spirit of French Lick, Alan Bishop, uh, down there has been doing amazing things. Uh, he has released the William Dalton weeded bourbon. Uh, also uh, has the Lee W. Sinclair bottled in bond and the Maddie Gladden bottled in bond. And uh, just uh, his what he's been doing 
uh, he was talking today on uh, a face uh, on Facebook about doing a bonded apple brandy. Sounds delicious. The stuff they're doing down there in Indiana is spectacular. Uh, if you ever get a chance, uh, it's right there, uh, right there in West Baden, Indiana, in Indiana, and uh, also uh, just stop by in the at the distillery and say hi. So also, we also have now brought on Log Still Distillery. Uh, Log Still Distillery. Here we go. I can do this better. Log Still Distillery traces its roots back to Joseph Washington Dance hollowing out a poplar, a poplar log to distill his first batch of Kentucky bourbon in 1836. And now a new generation of distillers is continuing in his footsteps with Joseph Washington's great, great, great grandson, Wally Dant, along with his cousins, Lynn Dant and Charles Dant as co-distillers. The campus is opening in phases throughout 2021 in Gethsemane, Kentucky, in southern Nelson County, and will employ 126 people once fully operational. Approximately an hour drive from both Louisville and Lexington, Dant Crossing is a picturesque 300 plus acre campus with a slew of amenities and activities for the whole family. It will be a one of a kind destination for unforgettable weddings, memorable corporate events, day trips, and weekend getaways, and will be anchored by Log Still Distillery. The amenities at the campus will include a network of wooded walking trails, a fully functional private train depot connected to the Kentucky Railroad Museum, an outdoor amphitheater, farm to table restaurant, 12 acre, lake or 12 acre lake for fishing, and four unique lodging options included, including the recently opened bed and breakfast, the homestead and Poplar Cottage. Uh, they feature Monk's Road, the 5th District Series Bourbon. The first release in our 5th District Series pays homage to Gold Spring Distillery, a historic distillery in Southern Nelson County, Kentucky that was located just a stone's throw away from the site of our new distillery today. This six-year-old single barrel bourbon masterfully blends notes of corn, rye, and malted barley for a product that receives the spirit of yesteryear. And then now our third sponsor is Watershed Distillery in Columbus, Ohio. They just released their Bottled in Bond bourbon. Bottled in Bond is a rare and recognized mark of quality and transparency. Watershed Bottled in Bond bourbon is made in a single season right here at the Watershed Distillery. Then aged in our bonded warehouse, aged for four years and bottled at 100 proof, the result is pure and flavorful bourbon. Each batch is a true snapshot of the bourbon we were producing at the time of barreling. The quality of this spirit is authentic reflection of the grit and hard work that we have been putting in at Watershed since we started in 2010. Aaron Harris, uh, the new master distiller there, also with Greg Lehman and Ann Dimmick, uh, produce some very, very fine, are producing some very, very fine bourbon. Uh, their single barrel, uh, barrel strength at the distillery right now in the gift shop are two amazing picks that I have had a chance. So if you get a chance to get to the Watershed Bourbon, uh, Watershed Distillery in Columbus, Ohio, make sure you stop by, say hi to Ann, Greg, and Aaron, and also make sure that you stop by at their wonderful re uh, restaurant that they have next door with uh, chef prepared meals. It's just a unique experience and well worth the stop. All right, so this is gonna get way better folks doing the three. I think I, I can't believe that I screwed up the, the Spirit of French Lick, which I've been reading, I should actually have memorized because uh, they have been on board, uh, I believe uh, since last November. So, uh, but now having the two, uh, you know, sponsors, uh, Log Still Distillery, and then also the Watershed Distillery, I'm really super pumped. This is really kind of a, uh, turning out to be pretty cool.
So that brings us to this week. Uh, the Scotchy Bourbon Boys, we are at www.scotchybourbonboys.com. Please check us out. Uh, in the, on the website, you can find out about all the other uh, Scotchy Bourbon Boys that podcast with us. We have uh, Young Nose, who is getting ready to ju jump back in. Hopefully, this August, he will be on a podcast uh, via Zoom from South Carolina. We also have Super Nash, who's been quite busy, but he's busy so that he can meet up with us in September at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Also, we have Xavier. He is also going, recovering well, and it looks like he's going to be on a couple of the podcasts coming up here in August. And then also we have Roxy, my wife, uh, who chimes in from time to time, but also makes this technically when we go on the road work. But uh, we just had our, uh, and when you check out that website, you can find all the bios and everything about us. Plus also, uh, not this month, but next month, uh, every second Friday and fourth Friday of the month, we do Whiskey Live, a live Facebook live tasting of one spirit that is usually acquirable and affordable. Uh, we spend a half hour with us on a Friday night and we just have an uh, awesome time. Check that out. Uh, I believe uh, we are looking at, <laughs> I don't have the date, but the second Friday of August, please, uh, you know, spend a little time with us. And then uh, when you're there at the website and you're checking all the different stuff out and what we have uh, there, please uh, click on that Patreon link. We are on Patreon. It's at the top right hand corner. Click on it, it'll take you there. Uh, all the support that we can possibly get, you we can get there. Plus, you get a lot of swag and a lot of different uh, offers, including personal tastings with a Scotchy Bourbon Boy of your choice. We will send you a tasting mat. We will send you the samples that you will taste along with us and uh, hook up a Zoom meeting. Or if you're close to us here in Canton, we can work something out direct. Uh, but uh, check that out. Check the Patreon out. We appreciate all the support everybody's given us. Uh, it's starting to get rolling. Also, we are on YouTube. This podcast will be on YouTube tonight uh, when I get, I should be able to get it up uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's wonderful, the different things that I've been able to do technically to be able to get this podcast uh, running, and YouTube is starting to move a little bit along. Our last, uh, our last uh, podcast with Aaron uh, had halfway decent for us, had halfway decent first week views, which uh, that's kind of how uh, YouTube works. But we have a special uh, giveaway coming up. It's going to be based with linking Right now we have 75 subscribers on YouTube and we want to up that. And we have seven bottles of whiskey uh, and Super Nash has handpicked each bottle and he will be coming up with a post on Facebook in the Scotchy Bourbon Boys uh, group. But also we will put that through YouTube and then also throughout the whiskey groups and communities. And we are going to be giving away those seven bottles at, all at once on September 29th. It starts tonight. You All you have to do is go to YouTube, hit subscribe, and then on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube in the comment section once on this podcast or once we load the description of the bourbons by Super Nash up to YouTube and on Facebook, you will put this pound S B B subscribed pound S B B subscribed. And that will enter you into the drawing for seven different bourbons or actually whiskeys because there's i believe there's a rye in there 
but I know that we have Lee W. Sinclair, Four Grain Bourbon will be one of them. And I know that the Elijah Craig A121 batch will also, uh, it's a barrel strength and that will also be a part of the giveaway. And all you have to do is subscribe to us on YouTube. Now, uh, for the 75 subscribers who already subscribed, all you have to do then is still on Facebook, uh, Twitter, or on the YouTube channel, put into the comments or do a post with pound SBB, Scotchy Bourbon Boys, SBB. <laughs> like, how do I, how do I know? Um, pound SBB subscribed. So there we, there you have it. Our new contest, we will be randomizing all the new subscribers on Sept the night of September 29th and seven lucky subscribers will win whiskey. <laughs> so just uh, hang in there, start, uh, just remember, S pound SBB subscribed and that gets you entered into the drawing. So there you go. So uh, another cool thing that we've uh, got is that lately uh, we had our 500th winner who she walked away with a bottle of Elijah Craig small batch that depicted that she was our 500th winner, which is really kind of cool. I really found that slick. <laughs> but that was our 500th winner and that was two weeks ago and we now um i believe we're up to 561 members and we had 15 new members this week uh let's give a shout out to justin strumpfer tom connor sweeney shore tenders ross the jew weinberg alan stenger bryce rowan Thomas Haston, Mark Bayer, Dario Wilson, James Daniels, Donnie Joe, Dave Peterson, Chris Sweet, Lloyd Jeffrey, and Eric Clapier. Eric Clapier is a good friend of mine. He is in the Distilled Spirits. Uh, I, I knew him in college. It's wonderful to have you, Eric. Uh, welcome to the group. But everybody else, Welcome to the group. We are getting big. To have 60 in uh, about two weeks is fantastic for us. And uh, every day, there, it just keeps growing. So it's exciting. All right. We got that. Got through that. Woo! <laughs> so tonight, uh, I wanted to talk. Uh, once again, this is going to be a tiny talk. I'm excited about what's going to be coming in the future. There will be more guests through Zoom. And then also we will be having uh, some podcasts with other Scotchy Bourbon Boys through Zoom. Plus, it looks like I'm working on, I can't give any details, but it looks like I'm working on some live podcast, finding another podcast partner to join the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. If that comes to fruition uh we will be excited it's a kind of some big news but that has to be finalized before we can say anything but hopefully we will get more uh direct contact when i'm when i'm podcasting by myself i know it's not as good you know one person drinking alone isn't as good as two people having a blast so but tonight's uh tonight's uh what would you say topic but more of uh what we're going to be talking about uh is and what every day means so when you're out there in all the meetings and everything you've got the everyday drinker the everyday sipper a, a sipper what's your favorite sipper what's your what's your um you know what's your favorite uh high-end bourbon so this category of everyday drinker to me and I'm, this is the description because there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the bourbon industry that there's so many different categories and none of the categories are truly defined. I mean, the the ultimate of not being truly defined and when it is defined, it kind of completely 
uh, you know, doesn't make any sense, but it's small batch because a, a true small batch to me is what you're getting where you're getting, you know, maybe 30 to 100 barrels mixing maybe, or, you know, that's, a, that's, that's like what a small batch would be, but you're talking about thousands and thousands of barrels can be still called a, a small batch. So uh, what a small batch is, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of check that out. I mean, there's just, uh, the description is everywhere. And some of the places, you know, for instance, uh, some of the small batches are distributed nationally and other ones you can't, uh, they're distributed just at a distillery, a local distillery. So that there's a lots of different levels of small batch, but small batch basically puts it in a, puts it into a specialty uh, part. And that's not what we're going to be, dis that's not what an everyday drinker would be. To me, an everyday drinker is a anywhere between probably $26 and below. Uh, it, can't, it can't be expensive. It can't say small batch. Now, I've found that, uh, you know, what, what, what I did is I went through my collection and I tasted uh, what uh, put up against pretty much uh, the Jim Beams, the Jim Beam Blacks, you know, those are, those are, now you're into this, the, the everyday drinkers. Uh, Jack Daniels, uh, that's an everyday drinker. I would like to say Elijah Craig could be, but it's probably almost in the price range, but it's a small batch. So that disqualifies. but you're talking about the Ezra Brooks, Evan Williams, those just shelf $18, $20, um, bottles are your everyday drinkers. And I basically put, uh, put it through the test with, uh, I had Evan Williams bottled in bond, which is really good. And I thought it was, uh, but what I look for in an every, everyday drinker and bottled in bond took itself out because it wasn't an everyday drinker. It really went up into the level of a good small batch. And when I'm drinking small batch, I, I usually am not thinking of those as everyday drinkers because I usually will put that in a Glen Karen and I'll sip on it. So those qualify for everyday sippers. And sipping means that you put about an ounce or two ounces into the glass and you sip on it for a half hour or 45 minutes while you relax. Where a drinker is, you're going to put that on ice or you're going to drink it like uh, throughout the night half the bottle's gone and you're just you're not sipping on it it's drinkable it's kind of like you don't want to it goes down a lot um i don't want to say smoother but more refreshing so what i came up with out of all the bourbons i came up with uh old tub which i i don't know why but that the old tub does it for me it's got a richness and it's got a, a refreshing aspect that anytime that if I, if I have a bottle, I'm going to be basically, I got to watch out. And then I've got early times uh, bottled in bond, which has now been taken over by Buffalo Trace. And I've got Jim Beam single barrel. Now it's a single barrel. Now, the one thing that I found about this is I was able to come out of Kentucky and I was at the party source and it was $24.99. And I basically jumped on that, picked up a bunch of them. And to me, at $24.99 for a single barrel, that qualified. And this single barrel drinks very refreshing. And I've had, I'm on my second, and I think I have four total bottles right now. And so far, the first two they're half gone and we are talking about once again that's what you're looking for if you're in an evening and you all of a sudden but those everyday drinkers are the ones that just go down refreshing and then the last one that made it and it went up against weller special reserve was buff buffalo trace and uh, the weller was a little bit oakier but in in the case buffalo trace was once again I felt more drinkable. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the drinkability of these bourbons. Now, the Jim Beam single barrel at 108, uh, and then you've got two, uh, 100, and then uh, let me see what the old tub, let's see, 
believe this is the old tub. And once again, this is this is not good to do. I want to say 90 proof, but all right, I'm gonna cheat everybody and I'm just gonna use my phone. It looks like it's 100 proof. Kentucky unfiltered. Yep, it's 50% and it's 100. So it's not a bottled in bond, not that I see. Still the straight bourbon, nope, so, but it's 100. We got 100 for the old tub, 100 for the early time. We got 108 for the Jim Beam. And then I believe the Buffalo Trace is 90, I want to say 92 point, 45. So it's 90. So we've got 90, 100, 8, 100, 100. So we're going to put up, uh, we're going to put up the, we're just going to, what I'm going to try and do is taste them to see which one actually is the everyday drinker that I wanna. Now, again, the everyday drinker is the drinkability of it. It's not, there are some, you know, when you're talking about, it's something that goes down like smooth, not smoother, more refreshing. And there's not a lot. So it's gotta, it's gotta have a, a little bit of a, a, a punch at 100 proof, a little bit of body, but it's got to also uh, be something that if you have a couple, you know, it's the, it's it's that's not a problem, and you're not looking to sip it. So it's just a different category. That that everyday sipper, um, you're talking about a more richer, bolder. Some you can, everyday sippers can be uh, higher proofed uh, barrel strengths. Uh, or they could be toast, the toasted barrels. Those are like really flavorful. And, you know, that's what you're looking for. And then you're also with an everyday sipper. Instead of 20, under $26, you're probably for an everyday sipper looking for something under $40. So those are a lot of different things. And then, you're, then, then when you're coming down, now you remove the everyday. And when, what's your favorite sipper or what's your favorite drinker? You're talking about uh, a more expensive and uh, less, uh, what'd you say, obtainable bourbon. The, to be an everyday drinker, these all have to be obtainable. And here where I live, every single one is obtainable. So I'm going to just do it in order of what I think. I'm going to try the Buffalo Trace first. We got Buffalo Trace right here, 90 proof. Gonna put that in the lowest proof. And I'm gonna put that up against, cause I'm gonna put the bottled in bonds. I'm gonna put that up against Jim Beam's single barrel, see what happens. All right. And 108. So at the end of this, I might be a little bit tipsy because we are talking about drinkability. We're not talking about sipping. I'm not sipping this, knows it. On that Buffalo Trace, you get that normal caramel, delicious. I like this, that's a very light nose, but here we go. Now, it's a little hot, a little for an everyday drinker. It warms you up. It approaches the sippability. Buffalo Trace is more, it's not, it, it's the price is right but I could put this into the sipping category and I think it would do all right, but I still think there's a drinkability aspect of it. Now I'm putting it up against this single barrel Jim Beam. Let's see what happens here. I should have, I should have nosed it. Now this has a more of that beam profile. You got some peanuts in there, some hazelnut, a little bit of rye. This is not the caramely sipper kind of thing. This has got, this is a high rye, nice nose. Here we go.
the higher proof got me a little bit in the back of my throat as far as drinking down. But the mouthfeel of that Jim Beam single barrel is very, very drinkable. And uh, the hug isn't as warm and it's not as spicy as that Buffalo Trace. And it doesn't have the, what'd you say, the oaky. So if I was to compare these two, and it's really tough because they're completely um, different, uh, but that caramely flavor, like I said, Jim Beam single barrel doesn't go up to me into the, it could also be get up into the everyday sipper, but this is a little bit, for 108 proof, this is about as drinkable as 108 proof gets. Wow. So of the two, for drinkability and everyday drinker, I'm gonna stick with the Jim Beam single barrel over the Buffalo Trace. A lot of people will think that's different, but I think the, the aspect of the mouthfeel is a little bit creamier, a little bit more refreshing where the Buffalo Trace, trace the, the mouthfeel is um, a little bit spicier, a little bit oakier. It's got the caramel, but it's more warming than refreshing. So that's just what I'm gonna go by on that. So Jim Beam wins on that one. Now I, I believe I showed the Jim Beam single barrel. There it is. And then we've got the old tub again, right here, 100 proof. And this is gonna go up against the early times. Put a little water in there. Now old tub, this is gonna be interesting because I wanted to put it up maybe against a single barrel, but it, went, it might go up against a single barrel because the single barrel's going on to that next uh, level. And uh, here we go for the old tub. Put that back. Now this is very similar to the single barrel nose, but this has a little bit of floral and it's a little less ethanol. But there's a little bit of that peanut in there. <laughs> the drinkability of this. It's a hundred proof. The finish of what's left in your mouth here. So out of the three I've just tasted, this is the most drinkable. It's very flavor neutral. It picks, it's, it's simpler than the other two. So when you're talking about a sipper, you're trying to pull out flavors. But when you're talking about a drinker, you're just looking at the overall mouthfeel and the overall flavor. You're not trying to get 20 different flavors. An old tub delivers that exactly what I think a drinker should be. The difference in the eight proof And this goes oaky, back palate, but finish brings back a very hazelnut uh, peanut finish, and it's long. I mean, for eighteen ninety nine a bottle, <laughs> I don't know how you go wrong. I just, I just love old tub. So, old tub. I think I just put it up against single barrel also and Buffalo Trace and I'm going with old tub is in first place. So that lets early times. I've loved this bourbon from the start as far as I have this in pretty much anything that needs bourbon in, a, in some sort of capacity, uh, soaking peanuts, not peanuts, pecans that I do for uh, my, uh, now this is a definitely, when it comes to a color, this, this is a redder amber color, more, you know, than the old tub is more towards honey. The early times is getting closer to an amber ale or caramely. 
So let's, uh, I'm not used to drinking so much so fast because this is the drinkability. So, all right, so I'm just letting the whole thing settle down here. Here we go. No early times. Very neutral on it. It's been a long time since I've had this, uh, like in a in a Glencairn. I've all, I've had it on the rocks. I've had it, uh, I've had it in my you know used to soak pecans, and I've had a little bit, and I would drink it, and then I also was drinking it. Uh, it's just the nose. If you're going to go old tub, tub comparatively to this, the old tub's winning. But then also we, I love, I, I'm going to taste this because there's a lot of cloves and whatever. I've used this for our wassail. I've used it for um, mixing uh, lots of different mixed drinks. It's just a, a delicious bourbon. Let's see what happens as far as drinkability of this early times. Now, taste-wise, mm, Old Tub's got it, but we're not doing this. This is an everyday drinker. This is drinking-wise. Wow, Finish pulls off some apples. Where the shit did that come from? Out of nowhere, apples. There's no, this... <laughs> After drinking those other ones, let me see. Yeah, I take another sip. A little bit. <laughs> Here it is. It's like taking an apple, putting brown sugar and cinnamon, putting in the microwave, and that's what you get. I guess that's called a candied apple, but damn, completely different. It's not, it's a bourbon, but it's not the normal bourbon experience. But as far as drinkability, Old Tub is right They're They're, they're damn close. Now the first sip, I would say Old Tub's going to win it. That second sip where I picked up the apple on the finish and I put them, they threw in the cinnamon once again, this is a, early times is a really drinkable bourbon. Uh, you see this on the shelf at twenty six dollars. There's not that. There's not that much better of a deal. There's a lot of deals out, good deals out there that I'll say, and this is one of them. It packs what it. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to put. Holy shit. That's close. A lot of, one last time on the, here we go. <laughs> I don't know. They're both, I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta, if I was to rate this on drinkability, I think they're both right there. Uh, so Old Tub, as far as drinkability, is more whiskey bourbon-like, where early times still, the, the, the drinkability of these, if you were rating zero to 100 or zero to 10, both of them are at 10 and both of them are at 100. You you can drink the shit out of this. This so you want to get drunk. You had a rough week. It's Friday night and you want to not break the bank and you want to get drunk. This the old tub in early times bottled in bond and old tub 100 proof which is, you know, it's oh it is bottled in bond. Um, there you go. Old tub bottled in bond and early times bottled in bond. They're, this, these are two fantastic, unbelievably priced bottled in bond bourbons. 
if you're in the mood to get drunk drinking a little bit of peanut, a little bit of caramel, but if you're in the mood to get drunk with apple, cinnamon, and brown sugar, so if you want a whiskey drinkable bourbon, old tub's it. If you want a sweeter, kind of unique flavored bourbon that you just want to drink, early times is it. And then I, I think I think it's a tie. And I did not uh, when I picked these and they went through their process of going through up against everything. Uh, they never came close to each other. Uh, I did this over a couple days, and the old tub definitely uh, is right up there, and so is early times uh, bottled in bond. So uh, early times bottled in bond is being distributed now by Diageo and Buffalo Trace. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but if you see it on the shelf, get it, I, I strongly say. And then old tub comes out of Jim Beam, which is... Uh, Beam, how how the hell, <laughs> Centauri, uh, and same as the as the owners of Maker's Mark, but Beam Centauri, uh, Old Tub comes right out of there, and it's some delicious stuff. And we are talking about the drinkable, the drinkability, the everyday drinkable bourbon. Uh, I have to say that I'm going to give Old Tub in early times. It's going to be a tie. So I don't know. I, you know, overall, it just uh, the tie. <laughs> I can't choose between the two, so it's got to be a tie. So I would say now. One of the things I've used in the past is this whiskey tasting journal. What's really cool about it, it gives me uh, the score, all the information that you need, the flavor wheel, the color wheel, and you got the score. But I'm gonna say that if I'm, uh, so a lot of times, I'm, and, and I'm usually tasting on the podcast, uh, and I'm doing it off of sipping. These are sipping. I'm looking for lots of different flavors. I'm looking for lots of different noses. The finish, I'm looking for a sweet finish because I'm a sweet finish guy. I don't like a bitter taste or a, uh, a stringent taste in my mouth to finish up. I'm looking, even I'm not so hot on leather and tobacco on a finish. I'd rather have chocolate milk, chocolate, caramel. Uh, and so uh, there's, I don't mind a sweet oak finish. I do mind a very uh, high tannin, bitter uh, tannin finish. So when you're talking about like how the oak finishes, now in both these, these are, like I said, in so, <sighs> I'm going to try and break the tie. So this old tub, let's, let's, let's just try. It's not even fair on drinkability to have a nose, but old tub definitely kicks early times ass. Let's just do out of 16, four each with um, maybe an extra, an extra, you can have a butt up up if anybody's aware of our scotchy bourbon boys uh <laughs> barrel bashing i'm not going to barrel bash because the barrel's not anywhere near but at the same time let's just uh do this the nose on this is a three body's a three Taste is a two. Finish is a three. Let's see what we got. All right, let's hit the early times. 
this Glen Karen. By the way, tonight we are tasting in Scotchy Bourbon Boys Glen Karen. You can get it through the YouTube, YouTube, the Patreon. Can you see that? There we go. Uh, you could get it through the Patreon uh, program. Uh, just go to patreon.com, look up the Scotchy Bourbon Boys, and uh, subscribe. Uh, it's a monthly subscription, and you can get a Glen Karen. You can get Scotchy Bourbon Boys t shirts, everything, all our swag. So check that out. But also, if you go to the website, www w.scotchybourbonboys.com. We have it for sale there, along with our Scotchy Bourbon balls <laughs> and our t-shirts. But you could pick up this, uh, and this was made possible by Martin Duffy of the Glen Karen Glass uh, Company. He is the North American Glass Representative, and he helps us get all our Scotchy Bourbon Boy glassware. Thank you, Martin Duffy. Now, also, uh, from time to time, uh, Super Nash comes on, and he sends us up a ton of whiskey. So I always give a shout out for his fire, fire extinguisher services. He is AB Fire Extinguisher uh, Services, and he is in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So if you're in that area and you need somebody to do your fire safety program and your fire check your fire extinguishers uh martin nash super nash is your man all right so let's just see what this early time is so i believe i gave that uh two three three six eight nine ten eleven i think i gave old tub eleven let's see what we give uh early times the nose is a two. Oh, but it's better i'm 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 nosing this one a lot better than i was the first time all right let's see both these for uh Bottled and Bonds have really nice bodies. So the bodies both are three. That's not even fair. This time, let's see what happens this time. Second time around. It's a little bit more astringent to me. So out of this, I would give the nose, once again a two, because neither one had great noses, Three for the body, three for the taste, and two for the finish on this one because it's got a little. So this gets a ten out of a out of four, ten out of sixteen, <laughs> and the old tub is getting eleven out of sixteen. So it looks like old tub is my twenty twenty one most drinkable bourbon everyday drinkable bourbon so that's where we're at with that so once again i'd like to give a shout out to our three sponsors the spirit of french lake and alan bishop wally lynn and charlie dant at log still distillery and aaron harris and dimmick and greg Lehman at Watershed Distillery. All these people are fantastic people, wonderful people. I've met them all. If you get a chance to get to any of the distilleries, uh, stop by, say hi, because every single one of them have are doing the right thing, making great spirits and bourbon and whiskey, but also they are what whiskey is the friendliness the family aspect of what they're doing the dedication to their craft because creating spirits is an art form 
that you can't take lightly. So uh, it's kind of like uh, everything that I'm going to try and let's see. Yep, I can get in this set up for the finish. <laughs> it actually worked. Uh, they're, they're just, uh, the quality of people in the industry overall has been amazing. I've met some of the best people and it just seems like, uh, when you're dealing with bourbon and whiskey, that it equals good times and good friends. And remember everybody, live dangerously. Take chances. Live your life. With that said, another edition of the Scotchy Bourbon Boy podcast is in the books. And let's say good night. By the way, this is Jim Morrison at the Hollywood Ball. Hollywood Bowl in 1967.